In this proof, we're given that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. What that means is because of these markings, opposite sides are parallel. So here, QR is parallel to ST, and QT is parallel to SR. And they want us to prove that QR is congruent to TS, and RS is congruent to QT. We're in a unit with congruent triangles, but there are no congruent triangles here. They did give us a hint telling us to draw the diagonal RT. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Okay, I got this guy. Oh look, I got a triangle. I got actually two here. Is there a way to prove these guys are congruent? Well, let's just make sure we can figure out how to do them and what their names are. Let's try to write a congruent statement. So I'm going to start with, let's say, triangle Q, and I'll go across the long side, and I'll say R, and then I'll go across the diagonal here and label it T. Well, if I'm going to name the other triangle, if they happen to be congruent, I have to start at S. And I also have to go across the long side of it, going this way towards T, and then back up the diagonal to get R. So if I can prove these two triangles are congruent, and let me highlight them to show the difference. So QRT is this triangle. I want to see if I can prove this guy congruent to STR, this lower guy. Is there a way we can do that? Because if we do, then I can say these parts right here, QR and RS of both uh, pairs, they're corresponding parts. So if the triangles are congruent, those would be congruent too. So far we've talked about four different congruence theorems. SSS congruence, but you really should say side-side-side congruence. Side-angle-side congruence. Angle-side-angle congruence. Angle-angle-side congruence. So looking at this, right, can I get three pairs of corresponding parts that are congruent? Well, right now, in whichever one we use, we need to have at least one side. So, well, I know RT is congruent to itself, and RT is in both triangles. So that works. Um, so I can't really use this. There's not enough information for that. Which also means that I really can't use this guy either. I'd have two pieces of information. Now, let's talk about what it means to be a parallelogram. Parallelogram, or parallel has parallel lines, this guy right here is parallel to this guy. So, when you have parallel lines, you have to write an equation off that. And you have to know that when you have parallel lines, you have congruent angles. And so, if I were to redraw this here, just to kind of show you, let's say this is QR, that's parallel to TS, and I draw the diagonal across, what angles would be congruent from that picture? And that would be this guy and this guy. They're alternating to your angles. So they would be congruent. So I'd have one is congruent to angle two. Good. Now, let's look at the other side. Let's look at QT is parallel to SR. I'll draw the same diagonal. And if you look, I get this angle is congruent to this one. They're also altered interior. And maybe I'll name this one 3 and this one 4. Okay. So interestingly, I'll have two pairs of angles that are congruent and an included side. The, the side between those two pairs right here is congruent. So it looks like I'm going to be using angle side angle congruence. Now that we got an idea, we can start with the proof. So let's start with the given. QRST is a parallelogram. That's given. And when they tell us that, I, by definition, opposite sides are parallel. So let's start with the first piece of information. So let's start with one pair. We'll say QR is parallel to TS. These happen to be the guys that we're going to try to prove congruent anyway. And um, opposite 
sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Now, what does that do for us? Well, that tells us that alternate interior angles are congruent. And for this pair, those alternate interior angles are angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Now, I'm going to write it shorthand, but when you say it in your head or you answer it in class, you should say when two lines are cut by a transversal, lines are parallel if and only if alternate interior angles are congruent or equal. Now, this is great because this is an angle we need. So I'll just mark it so I keep track. And, well, similarly, I could say the other two sides are parallel. So let me draw that in. And we can say RS is parallel to QT. Same reason, opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. So this gives us two other angles and that was R angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 and again when you're answering this when two lines are cut by a transversal lines are parallel if and only if alternate interior angles are congruent or equal and this is, happens to be another angle we need the third piece of information is RT is congruent to itself. RT is in both triangles. And this is the reflexive property. A segment is congruent to itself. Now, this happens to be an included side. So we have an included, uh, excuse me, we have an angle, another angle, and an included side. I have three pieces of information. I have enough now to prove the two triangles we named are congruent. So I could say it now. Triangle QRT is congruent to triangle STR. How do we know that? We know that by angle, side, angle congruence. Now, <coughs> by the definition of uh, congruent figures, you see we took three pieces of information and proved these triangles are congruent. But once they're congruent, I have three new pieces of information. The other three pieces that I didn't know anything about. Two of them are QR is congruent to TS and RS is congruent to QT. These guys are congruent to each other. Why? Because QR corresponds to TS and RS corresponds to QT. So the reason here is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I hope this helps. All the best.